Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, uh, Sin City Preacher. I am really quite irritated tonight. <laughs> uh, I keep on encountering people who are claiming that the message the Apostle Paul has for us for salvation is different than the other messages that we find in the scriptures, for example, with the Apostle John, and now even the message we get from Jesus himself. And I'm going to prove to you that that's a lie. Uh, first, I want to refer you to a, a video I already made on this subject titled, Comparing the Apostles John and Paul. And in that video, I believe I proved that the message for salvation from Paul and the Apostle John is the same. It's easy believism. Believe in Jesus to receive salvation and eternal life. That's it. Paul and John are teaching the same message for salvation. But we have a group of people that sometimes are called ultra-dispensationalists, hyper-dispensationalists, super-dispensationalists. I call them paul onlyists that are teaching the salvation for us today is only available through the writings of Paul, particularly one or two verses, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. They not only say you can only get saved from Paul, but they even narrow it down now to two verses. And that is heresy, this hyper-dispensationalism. So watch my video comparing Apostles John and Paul, and you'll see that John and Paul are teaching the same message for salvation. Now I want to correct this false teaching that Paul and Jesus teach different messages for salvation. Okay, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 19, starting with uh, verse 16. Scripture says, And behold, one came and said unto him, speaking to Jesus, Good Master, what good thing shall I do? that I may have eternal life. This person is asking Jesus what kind of good work he can do to get eternal life. Is that what you think? You think that uh, people get to heaven because of good works? Uh, no, it's impossible. Uh, that's what Paul said, that's what John said, and this is what Jesus says too. You cannot go to heaven by your good works. So this young Jewish man is asking Jesus what kind of good works he can do so that he can have eternal life. And Jesus answers him. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one. That is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Well, first thing he's saying is, why are you calling me good? Because that's a, 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 an adjective that can only describe God. Only God is truly good. Man is just relatively good. We have degrees of goodness, but God is pure goodness. So Jesus is asking him, are, are you referring to me as God? <laughs> we know that Jesus is God, but he's putting the man on the spot. Will you acknowledge that I'm God? But the young man just ignores this question from from Jesus about why are you calling me good? Are you acknowledging that I'm God? But uh, so Jesus says to him, if thou wilt enter into life, that's eternal life, keep the commandments. Jesus is telling him, if you want to have eternal life, just keep the commandments, just be perfect. That's all you got to do. Be perfect, be good, as God is good. 100% good, perfect, with no sin at all. So, uh, the young man says to Jesus, He saith unto him, Which, Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, 
Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So Jesus runs off some of the Ten Commandments to him uh, to see if he's actually following the commandments. And the young man replies, The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth. What lack I yet? <laughs> Obviously, the man is, young man is full of himself, full of spiritual pride and hypocrisy because he hasn't really kept the commandments completely, but he's pretending that he has. Jesus knows better. So then Jesus poses this to him. Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come and follow me. So Jesus is ratcheting it down now trying to convict this man further. First, he's asking if he's followed the commandments, and the man, young man is lying to him because nobody has followed those commandments perfectly. So Jesus says, well, if you think you're perfect, then, okay, next I want to ask you, sell everything you own and give it to the poor and come and follow me. Now, does a person have to sell everything they own, give it to the poor, and become a disciple of Jesus to be saved? No. Jesus is telling this man to do this, to convict the man, to make him understand, no, you're not perfect. You're not working your way to heaven. You're a failure. But it goes on to say, verse 22, but when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. So even though the man would not admit that he's, uh, he hasn't kept the, the commandments, when Jesus asks him to sell everything he owns, Jesus really drives the point home. The man understands, this I cannot do, because he loves his possessions. Uh, and he has made wealth and materialism his God. He worships them. And he's not willing to give them up to follow Jesus. Now, that's not required to be saved. But it certainly proved for this young man where, where his heart was. His heart was in materialism. Then it says, in verse 23, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. <laughs> well, how do you think his re disciples responded to that? They were shocked. It says in verse 25, when his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? They're saying that well, if this rich man, you see the Jews uh, in the past and even Jewish people today, they believe that if a person is wealthy, that shows they're righteous because they're being blessed because they've done good. Therefore, God blesses them with wealth. So his uh, disciples are amazed. Well, if a rich man, obviously he must be good because that's why he has wealth. God's blessing him. If he can't enter the kingdom of God, then how can anybody? Well, Jesus, it says in verse 26, But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. The point here is that this young man came to Jesus just as the typical Jew would come to Jesus professing good works as their way to heaven because they believed they were saved by following the laws and being a good person. And Jesus proved to this young man, no, you haven't followed all the commandments. And he convicted the man, and the man went away, realizing that he's fallen short. Well, now the, the question comes up with the apostles, well, 
if you, the rich man can't be saved, how is it possible for anyone to be saved? Isn't that a great question? How is it possible? That's what they say. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed. And they said, that who then can be saved? Jesus said, with men it is impossible. Do you understand that? If you're watching this video right now, and you think you can work your way to heaven by being a good person, following commandments, changing your life, trying to satisfy God by being really religious, Jesus said, with man's efforts, with man it is impossible. With man's efforts, it is impossible. Jesus is trying to make us all understand that man's efforts, the very best efforts of man, are simply like filthy rags in the sight of God. Your good deeds will not get you in good standing with God, no matter how hard you try. So he says, these man-made efforts, are impo it's impossible to get saved that way. This is the same principle that applies to every time Jesus tells someone to do something that is impossible. When he says, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Go and sin no more. Go and be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. Jesus continues making the point that it is impossible for you to get saved by being religious. And here he comes out and says, with man it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Salvation is possible with God doing the saving, not with man saving himself through his good works. So Jesus is saying it's impossible to get saved by being religious. You can join all the religions of the world, you can... You can Practice religion uh, and, and be the most religious person in the world and you won't be saved through your own efforts. Jesus says, with only with God is it possible to be saved. In other words, man can't save himself through religion. Man needs an intervention from God. An intervention is what's needed. And that's what God has done. God has intervened. He, under, he knew that we were in a helpless situation. We couldn't save ourselves. So he said, I'll become a man, Jesus Christ. And I'll live the perfect life that they can't live. And then I'll die on a cross to pay for their sins. And then the problem is solved. The sin debt is paid because Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So, in all of Jesus' teachings, he's really making this point. It's impossible to get saved through man's efforts, through your religion. You need God to save you. And the only God that can save you is the one true God, our great Savior God, Jesus Christ. And then let's go to the book of John and see what Jesus says about what you need to do to get saved. In John chapter 11, verse 21 says, this is uh, Jesus appearing at the tomb of Lazarus after Lazarus was dead and buried for three days. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, Whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it to thee. Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? That is the question Jesus asks of Martha. That is the G question Jesus asks you today. Through all of time, 
we all must ask this question. And that is, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the resurrection and the life? He's the one that has the power to give you life everlasting. He's the one that will raise you from the dead and give you eternal life if you put your faith in him. That's the question Jesus asks. And that's how you get saved, according to Jesus. So, what did Jesus say about getting saved and the law? He said, the law only convicts us of sin and makes us understand our impossible state so that we need Jesus to save us. Now, let's go to Paul. Let's look at Galatians chapter 3. Verse 21, it says, Is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. Paul is saying, If there had been a law given which could have given life, he's saying, There was never a law given that could give us eternal life. Because all the laws that were given to us are impossible for us to follow perfectly. And the law is simply there to tell us we need to rely on a Savior. So he says, if there had been given a law, if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. In other words, Righteousness could have come by following the law, if you're able to follow it. Then he says in verse 22, But the scripture hath concluded all under sin. In other words, no one's been able to follow the law. Everybody's under sin. That the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. So, here Jesus is saying, that everybody has sinned. No one has, I mean, Paul is saying everybody has sinned. No one's been able to follow the law. But by, the, by our faith, then we can be saved. In verse 23, it says, But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up unto the faith which should afterwards be revealed. In other words, later on we'd understand that faith is what saves us and not the law. In verse 24, he says, Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ that we might be justified by faith. Here Paul is saying in his own way exactly what Jesus said earlier. He is saying that the purpose of the law was to teach us our sin and our hopeless situation. He says the law was our schoolmaster, our teacher, Law teaches us that we're sinners and our state is helpless and hopeless and we need to rely on the Savior. In verse 25 it says, But after that faith has come, we are no longer under a schoolmaster. We don't need to be looking at the law to convict us any further once we understand that, that we cannot be saved by following the law, by being religious, by our own efforts. Once we understand that, then the law has served its purpose. And now, all we need to do is just put our faith in the Savior. And he says in verse 26, For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. You see? In these two cases, you see Paul and Jesus teaching exactly the same thing. They use the law to show us that we're sinners and we are failures. And, and we cannot work our way to heaven by following the laws. And therefore, we need to be saved. Jesus said the same thing. It's impossible for man, but with God it's possible. If you rely on God, you'll be saved. And the only God that saves is Jesus Christ, the one true God. There is no other name under heaven whereby one must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. 
So, in the previous video I made, watch it carefully and you'll see that Paul and John are both teaching exactly the same message of salvation. Believe in Jesus Christ for eternal life. And now, I hope you understand that even Jesus himself taught the same thing. So if someone tells you that Paul and Jesus are disagreeing, they're teaching a different way of being saved, they're insane. Jesus and Paul and John all taught the exact same thing. So I hope you don't fall under this deception called hyper-dispensationalism that rejects the words of Jesus Christ. They say, you can't be saved by the red letters, you can't be saved by the teachings of Jesus, and they say you can't be saved by the book of John, you can only be saved by the Paul's writings. That's a heresy. I hope you now understand. All right, thank you for watching. Uh, bless you all in the name of our great Savior God. His name is Jesus Christ.